from now on, like your parents were, you are the secret force of pole position. They're moving real fast, they're the only ones who Let's can get go, there on time. Okay, sis. And never too far behind, they're always fighting crime. Stand Pole up. position! What's behind? Pretty catchy stuff, huh? Do you know, I never knew they made a half-hour cartoon about this game, Pole Position. Atari's Pole Position. Can you believe that? 1984. <laughs> Matthew from Crosby, Texas told me about that. He says, you got to know about this, this thing. And I told him I'd give him, hey, Matthew, thanks for telling us. I had no idea, and I probably most of the people here didn't. He goes by Trackball on YouTube, by the way. Pretty catchy, huh? Look, beautiful pole We've just gone over the whole thing. Customer wanted the original black team on. He wanted to look just like it was when he played it in timeout years ago, right back in the old arcade. We put a new overlay on the control panel overlay. We repainted. Obviously, we had to touch up some of the artwork. You may pass through. Good. Yes, it is. Galaga. See where? Yeah, but this isn't the Crash 81 one. Touch up no. some of the artwork. That game looks incredible. That is the understatement <laughs> of the year. What? <laughs> what? That's Steven. What a jerk. He's hiding. Jerk! What is he working on now? Beautifying the next game. Ah, Class of 81. Okay, now he's working. He's beautified. Yeah, so stay away from I will, me. I will stay away. Yeah, okay, Steven. You, you did a wonderful job on this game. I could, it, could I, dare I say, it's the nicest Atari pole position on Earth? I Actually, I think it is. Look, look at this. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. Uh, come back here and... Uh-oh. Am I going to have to sit that low? There used to be in down there. Okay, here we go. This is not going to be nice. Ah! Oh. <sighs> Alright, let's look. We took the transformer out on the bottom, and we actually had to scrub and paint it, change the, the capacitor and also the fuse block. Now everything is nice and tidy and clean, and of course you see the two capacitors actually. Pole position uses two. They're from Bob Roberts and two power supplies, one for each board. Atari realized their big logic board, this is another one, see how big this is? Their big logic board would require a lot of power. And very cleverly, they installed two power supplies. What they didn't know, what they didn't know, is still, when the game sat on for 25 hours straight per day, 25, uh, it, uh, Empty cabinets. That's a thrilling bit of news. Jonathan! Your kitchen cabinets are empty, aren't Tell they? him we have empty cabinets for sale. And one free one outside. Good. All right, that's done. I never get a moment's peace. Have you ever watched a video where the phone hasn't rung? Okay. Now, what we did now is we supplemented the power because typically the edge connector fries. We put brand new pins up here where the edge connector power goes into both boards. But then we supplemented the five volts in ground here and on the other side. Frank, can you? I, yeah, I guess it's gonna be tough. Up here. Slide on terminals so the board can quickly be removed for service, etc. Oh, you know what else we did? You know what, Frank, I can't pull it out of the corner. Oh yeah, oh. can you just took your you know, I'd be pulled this out. Oh. Uh, see right there? Not on me The battery is easy to change. Do you have to drill holes for that? We, yeah. We Suppose it's not the right voltage or milliamps. Or so anyway, the lithium battery will last, I don't know, three, six, eight years, who knows. But it'll be easy for the customer to change. It'll only cost them a dollar. You won't have to worry. And it won't leak. Oh, you know what? I'll show you. Look. Leakage. Look. Believe it or not, this board still runs. But all this whole corner will have to come off and get all cleaned up. 
See all that? That's acid from that stinking battery. Batteries like that. Anyway, Bob Roberts supplied the cap kits. He sells the complete kits to rebuild the Atari Paris Wars. You have to rebuild these because they not only have the amplifiers on them, but they also have something called a sense circuit. Very clever design of Atari. What happens is with the sense circuit, when you have it adjusted at 5 volts here, it's 5 volts on the board. When without the sense circuit, all the standard power supplies, you actually have to adjust it right on the board itself. You have to put the five, you have to measure the voltage right off a chip. You don't have to do that with this. Very, very clever. And we're talking clever, and that was years ago. Frank, look underneath here. There's the optic for the steering board. We took that off and cleaned it and reflowed solder because that gets cold solder joints, and then your optic is intermittent. We have, we have actually have in here a 4600 chassis with zero burn in, a crystal clear, beautiful, full color picture that's razor sharp, all rebuilt with new capacitors. Are we ready for the sound effects? No. You know what? I'm going to put a different sound effect in. Tell me if this one works. I know, I know. Wait a minute. I told you it's catchy. Look, it's a catchy song. Well, the first time, maybe 50 times now. I can do it any time I want. Frank, don't do that again. I can do whatever I want. You can't. This is my video. But I'm holding the camera. Yes, but these boys know that I'm in charge. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep telling yourself that. Maybe I'll come visit you in Fantasyland when I need a break from reality. It's Friday. Did I hear my name? Hello? Actually, we needed to ask you a question. Do you have uh, a minute? I'm busy right now. No, this is important, believe me. You're going to want to address this issue. Yeah, right. Todd seems to think that he's in charge. We needed to know what you think about that. In charge of what? That's what we want to know. If he's in charge of the toilets, you're right. He's in charge of the toilets. You mean? Yes. <laughs> he's got to clean them all. That's his job. Thank you. But, 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 but. but if you mean clean the trash, he's in charge of the trash. <laughs> but, 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 but. Isn't my lovely wife lovely? I'm in charge of the money, if there is any. <laughs> Here, let me let me let me give you a kiss. Mm. Uh, uh. Uh, oh! Oh! Everybody was waiting for that. I was holding my breath. Uh, tell me, did you were you doing I Facebook? I got you big. No, were I'm doing playing? no <laughs> things. Were you playing like uh, solitaire? Candy Crush. Candy Crush. No, I'm not on the phone all the time like you are. Uh, we're editing. Here, we're done. We're done. Thank you, sweetheart. You're welcome. See, look at that. My lovely wife. Here, working hard, diligently hard. Look what I have. Quarters, because our customer would like to see this game, just like the arcade, so we can program it with these case quarters. You simply drop them into the machinery. And electronically, the game understands it's a real quarter and programs itself to start. Are you aware that on this game, this was originally supposed to be a Bally Midway game, and Bally Midway did not like the game? Nope. They didn't. They said, no, nope, nobody will want it, nobody will want to play it, and they passed on the licensing. So Namco, who licensed Pac-Man to Bally, they licensed it to Atari. And guess what? They sold thousands of these. Atari, one of Atari's biggest hits. As a matter of fact, this also spurned Pole Position 2, which was a kit. They sold a few dedicated, but mostly it was a kit. You got a new sticker for here. You got a new monitor bezel with the races on it. And you also got a new top glass and a whole bunch of chips to plug into your original Pole Position board provided that poor board was not uh, infested with rot from that lovely um, battery. So that now, would explain why a lot of the later Namco games were all Atari, like that's right. Dig Dug and... That's right. 
and we can put our you put your initials in with a gas pedal. If you have a pole position and you can't put the, your initials in with a gas pedal, a record. Who turned that on? Remote control. The TNT ghost. Do we have a ghost? It's on, it's on mm -hmm. Ah, it's on automatic. That's the peanut gallery over there. Okay, let's see what he's doing. Come on over here. What on earth are you, I can't even get by. Oops. Well, it's probably a good thing. Well, look at him, I'll tell you what, we're gonna come back because I wanna show him Gauntlet Legends. We'll come back to Wallace. Let's go and look at that. Right over here, right over here, look. Look at this gorgeous Gauntlet Legends. This is the one with a medium res monitor. You know, this is our 10th Legends that we sold. Now the next version, Dark Legacy, they made dedicated Dark Legacies, but most of them were kits. We only sold six of them. But it's so easy to change your games over, too. But I wanted to show you something. See that beautiful Neotech monitor? It's super sharp. The controls for it are right here. I left this loose so you could see the solid state joysticks. In my other Gauntlet videos, you've seen these things. So you, you kind of know how these work and such. I wanted to show you something we've adding. We're adding now to all these games. You see this here? This is called an oops so the glass doesn't fall off bracket. See? See, the problem is, is the glass just sits there. So if you lift the panel up, and somebody were to bump the game, the glass could tumble out. And then there'd be a big crash. So now we're putting this little lip on there to keep the, oh. <laughs> Frank, is there a reason I subconsciously do that? Maybe you're sending a message to your viewers, I don't know. <sighs> oh my gosh, Frank. You know, I can't get that song out of my head. Ready when you are, Rody. In the danger zone. You know, I can only play that in under 30 second clips. I wish I could play the whole thing. You know what? I'll put a link at the end. I'll put a link at the end so you can you can click and listen to the whole thing. Anyway, let's get back to Gauntlet Legends. Actually, I think it's time we switch over and let Frank explain what's going on. Here, I will operate the camera. So what we did was, as we usually do with the hard drive games, we take the hard drive out and put a flash card in. This game is very funny about which flash cards it will work with. Most of the games we use will work with the Transcend cards. This game does not like it. Now, if you do some research online, you're going to find varying stories. Some people say SanDisk doesn't work. They'll say Kingston doesn't work. This is a SanDisk. It's a gold edition 32 uh, gigabyte card and it works fine. What I did with this game and a lot of games that have power that feed drives through the JAMA connector, the edges get burned up. And this one had been repaired before. But what I did was I have the main trunk from the factory here which feeds power into the JAMA connector. But the power supply is a second plug that isn't used. So what I did was I pinned it so I have one dedicated line running right to the CF card adapter and the other one just feeds power which used to come out for the hard drive feeding in. It just takes some of the load off of the JAMA connector so that should never have a problem again. One other thing about doing this is that when you shut the game off and you turn it on, let's go around to the front, you turn the game on, it's going to boot up, you're going to get an error message. It comes up with an address alignment error. Apparently, it only happens when you first turn the game on. You'll get this, it'll go out, the error will come up, and it'll give you a message three taps and you're out at the bottom. You can hit the button three times or you can just wait. It'll, it'll automatically do it. This game just happens to do that with the flashcards no matter what. From all the research I've done, I found out a lot of people have that same problem. It's not even a problem. It just goes away and you never have to worry about it. As soon as the game starts, it's fine. So you'll get this and just get all this weird hex addresses that come up. So we could tap it three you times. You could, but if the customer doesn't want to, they don't have to. Just just let it sit for a minute. It'll reboot and it'll be fine. As good as new. So, but the nice thing is, I mean, it's just a minor inconvenience, which, like I said, it's not even an issue. But once you have that done, well, you'll maybe, never have to worry about hard drive. Maybe we should call failure. Atari. Yeah, 
good luck with that. It's called no. Nolan. No, Nolan? Nolan, sure. too. He has to say about it. Does he, he think they'll do so that? There we fine. go. And the game plays perfect. Ah, uh, look at that. Now, I noticed, Frank, what about this note? This, this is... This, this is oh! But... Oh... It That's no, what you do with that note. It no longer has a fragile device. That's right here. That's used where it used to be. Oh, wait a minute. What about this note? Well, that's going to that's gonna be hard. Yeah, we'll leave that in there for nostalgia. Okay. And we'll now, put a new timekeeper yeah, in Yeah, look. See, that's important. What does the timekeeper do? Well, that holds all your settings. But your, okay. your volatile memory there. Right. So that's a brand new one. Yep. And where can you buy them? Uh, DigiKey is one of the main places. There's other people that sell them, too. But I like to buy electronics. I buy as much as I can from Mauser. Um, but Jameco sometimes, DigiKey, sometimes some suppliers have stuff that others don't. You have to look around. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. So this one is ready to go, and of course a new power supply. Of course. Okay, and the monitor has all new capacitors. Yep, Crystal. Well, did. Frank, I think we need to finish up with something. I started to talk about the pole position uh, gas pedal, but it's gone. I've already got a pack in its place. We changed all these games since we filmed it. The pole position's actually very happily in the man's house. He was thrilled. He gave the guys each a $20 tip. Ching, ching, the delivery guys. But well, we know he was happy. This is what I wanted to tell you. The gas pedal on pole position has a, a wire, a filament. Now, what's unique about it is the first printing of the gas pedal, the first printing of the manual, has shows the gas pedal, and it shows this, and it shows the part that gets the little um, uh, thread, the filament, but it doesn't show how the hell to do it. <laughs> the fifth printing does. So the fifth printing is actually a thicker book, and this explains how to thread the gas pedal so it works right. What a pain in the neck that is, but boy, once you have it done, it's done. I thought I'd point that out. We threw this manual in the bottom of the pole position so he'd be able to do it. Here's another thing that, that the first printing doesn't have. It has standard dip switch settings. Okay? All standard stuff. Uh, and now, now I'm not going to find it. Here we are. But it doesn't tell you the fact that you can also change the speed limit. Oh! <laughs> speed limit. So you can actually have 225 miles an hour, which is what it's set at, but you can actually raise the speed to 244 miles an hour. So all this can be adjusted. Okay, so it's really clever stuff. You can also change the qualifying times. So, the fifth printing is the one to get. That's the most filling information for pole position. Oh, wait, oh, wait a minute, Frank. I almost forgot. I want to call Bally Midway and I want to talk to the guy that made the decision not to license pole position and, and instead Atari got it. Let's go in and call him. And I just happened to have the guy's phone number at his work. We call this number off. Yeah, Bob, please. Oh, Bob, it's Todd over at TNT Amusements. Listen, I just heard you were the guy that turned down the uh, idea of licensing pole position for Bally Midway when you were there. Yeah, tough stuff, huh? Listen, when you send over our pizza tonight, we want extra cheese on it, and don't screw up the order like you did last time. Thanks, bye-bye. That was mean. What the hell is wrong with you? It was Frank's idea. Frank, you tell him it was your idea. Yeah, these are all your ideas. It's no, written, you're produced. The one that... It's written, produced, and directed by Todd and oh, Tucky. Oh, 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 oh. You can get all the hate mail. Oh. You said, Frank, this would be a great idea. I said, uh. no, no, don't well, do it. Then I'm going to end like this.